On July 17, 1955, Disneyland officially opened to the public, and among the park's many day one attractions and experiences, the Mark Twain Riverboat was a guest favorite, and has remained one of Disneyland's most iconic experiences. However, while embarking on the peaceful travel along the rivers of America, you'll eventually pass by an unassuming log cabin, and while it may look like just a simple set piece, it has a fascinating history of change, controversy, and abandoned effects. Much like today, as a guest at Disneyland during its opening years, taking a ride on the Mark Twain Riverboat was a relaxing journey in which you would take in views of the park, as well as various scenes depicting wildlife and local inhabitants. However, shortly after setting off, a burning log cabin came into view. Holy cow, look at that! The cabin is on fire! And in front of this cabin is what appeared to be a man, depicted as having taken an arrow to the chest, in which the riverboat's captain would allude to him having been shot by an unfriendly Native American, who then set his cabin ablaze. Here's a settler's cabin set afire by flaming arrows. But of course the Indians had their friendlier moments too. And for nearly two decades, with the exception of minor adjustments or prop replacements, the scene remained essentially unchanged. But in the 1970s, the backstory was altered after concerns arose about the scene being perceived as racially insensitive. So the scene was now described to guests as the settler having been attacked by river pirates. Pirates! <laughs> It was also during the 70s that due to the energy crisis that had hit America, the cabin's flames were turned off, replaced by a fake fire effect much like the one used in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yo, yo, and it wasn't until the mid-80s that the fire returned, and with it came the removal of the arrow from the settler, altering the backstory again, this time to a moonshiner who had passed out from intoxication and had accidentally set his own cabin aflame. But this didn't last long either, as in the early 90s, the settler himself was removed entirely, with the story altered yet again, to the endangering of an eagle's nest on top of a nearby tree. Poor souls, I'm afraid we're too late to help. Captain, uh, pardon my opinion, but uh, it looks as if that fire was caused by just plain carelessness. Throughout the 1990s, the settler's cabin was left mostly alone, but between 2000 and 2001, the flames were again turned off, only this time they never returned, making the scene more or less abandoned, until becoming a simple homestead in 2010. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. But as far as why the effect was abandoned, some believe it was out of concerns of becoming a fire hazard to the surrounding landscape. Though according to various sources, either the flames were permanently turned off due to failing California's strict emission standards, or due to the discovery that the gas lines were in need of repair and would cost too much to fix. However, this could also be confused with Magic Kingdom Settler's Cabin in Walt Disney World, in which it is believed that during a refurbishment on the Liberty Bell in the early 2000s, the fire was turned off, only for it to later be discovered that the gas pipes, which hadn't been replaced since the park's debut in 1971, had deteriorated and were not deemed worth the cost of replacing, so it was more or less abandoned, until in 2014, when it was given a smoke effect similar to the cabin in Tokyo Disneyland. But the final nail in the coffin for the original settler's cabin in Disneyland came when a portion of the rivers of America was drained and rerouted, in preparation of the new land Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. As when the Mark Twain reopened in the summer of 2017, the original settler's cabin had been demolished and replaced, all but guaranteeing that the once burning settler's cabin effect will never be seen again. So what about you? What's your favorite less known attraction element that no longer exists? Also, if you would like to help support me in the making of these videos, please check out my Patreon and the Yes to World merchandise shop. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Like, retweet, and share, and I'll see you next time.